Hello and welcome to Legend of Keepers Prologues. This is probably an overused descriptor, but it's kind of like a reverse Darkest Dungeons where you play the role of a dungeon keeper and your goal is to defeat various groups of heroes as they attempt to kill you. Uh, as you can see I've played this game a little bit, about 5 hours or so. This is a demo version, so currently of the three potential dungeon masters, the only one available to play is the slave holder. You could just see there, they do have slightly different stats, so this one's good with monsters, bad with traps, kind of bad with spells, but decent with morale. Obviously when the uh, full game is released there'll be a lot more to it. Different dungeon masters, probably different monsters, different traps, all sorts of things. This here is the talent points. This was actually added in the game's last update. I believe the first time I played this, I'm not sure if this was actually here or not. But it's just a little thing. The playthroughs currently last for 52 turns. Each turn are representing an in-game week. At the end of it... Well, that's basically it. You just start again. I don't know if that's going to be how it is for the final game or not. But... Each time you replay through you get a little bit more XP, you level up and you get to spend points on these talent trees here. So currently I've got a little bit of enraged, a bit more damage and various bits and pieces. These aren't really major buffs, in fact ideally you'll never be using them because you will kill the adventurers long before they reach you. So here you have the schedule, that's just uh, got 8 employees at his monsters out of a maximum of 12, 4 traps out of a maximum of 6 settings are down here, this little fella here represents me, kind of centaur type creature money, the amount of tears I gather from scared heroes and the amount of blood I've gathered from dead heroes got artifacts that you can get through various means such as events or by defeating adventurers and as you can see, week one, we've only got one task, which is to defeat adventurers. And this bit here is the main meat of the game. You have three sort of randomly chosen adventurers from a pool. Because it's the first week, they're only level one, don't have much in the way of skills or abilities. But when you mouse over them, it does show whatever abilities they have. So I'm just taking a quick look here. So... As you can see, this week I've got a trap room, then some monsters, then another trap, then some monsters, then I get to cast a spell, and then I'm right at the end. These five are in a random order. You always get two traps, two monsters, and a spell, but it's different each time. So what I'm going to do is pop down a rallying horn. This will just demoralize these fellas. Well, ladies and one fella. And in theory, give my monsters in rage, although because... The uh, Barbarian gives them that enraged buff you can see there. Uh, my monsters probably aren't going to live past the first round. The monsters you start with in each playthrough do seem to be pretty much random to be honest. Uh, don't often get a Paladin as my first bunch, but here. Because I've got um, four traps, two are assigned to that at random of which I pick one. The other two will appear in that room later on if you have them five or six and you'll get three in the first room and then the other three in here again this is four monsters I've got a pool of eight it randomly picks four of which I select three for this room and then the other four will be there of which I will select three um, again as you go up to have say a maximum of 12 monsters you'll randomly select up to six of which you get to choose three so what I've got here is the uh, paladin type monster he provides a little bit of uh, damage reduction, as you can see on the passive listing there, to the monsters behind him. Um, weird, scary, Halloween pumpkin-headed skeleton. Does a bunch of fire damage and a big shouty orc. Yeah, we've got another trap here. Now, you can see the heroes here have a heart bar and a sm smiley face bar. So that's their health and their morale. You can attempt to defeat them either by reducing their health to zero or their morale by zero. I typically find it's easier to focus on morale, but there are some cases in which we'd be better off trying to take down their health. 
I mean, early game like this, it's a bit... doesn't really make much of a difference either way. And this is what I was saying about your monsters probably not surviving particularly long, but... Uh, so just put a little bit of, essentially, a dot morale damage over time. And it will just do an AoE that just knocks off some of their morale on each of them. So as you can see, the Barbarian's got a lot of hit points, does a lot of damage, but his morale isn't great. So I'm attempting to capitalise on that. There is the first one defeated already. He's run for it. Then we'll send him in there to scare. Minus 30 morale, quite a strong attack. Uh, you do obviously do far more damage to hit points with these various attacks than you do to morale, but then they generally have far more hit points than they have morale anyway. So he doesn't really have a choice as far as he's only got damage. He's one of the few monsters that has no morale. Uh, most of them will have a split of morale and damage attacks. This guy only does damage, so I will chuck an ice block at the last lady. And then we'll scare her. And then a little bit of a nightmare, as you can see that does a little bit of air damage and a little bit of morale, and it's an AoE. Or you can just do 30 damage and bleeding, where it says minus 15 life on the next turn. The turn after that will be minus 10, then minus 5, as the dot ticks down. But I'm not doing that, I'm just going to attempt to scare her off. And was successful. And so this is the reward, I get a choice. I automatically get the blood from dead heroes, all the tears from scared off heroes, and a bit of cash. Obviously, the higher level the heroes are, the more cash you get. And I get a choice of three potential rewards, of which I will choose the catapult. So here it automatically goes into week two, the second turn. I can try to train a monster, go to a merchant, see if I can buy some random stuff, or take an event. And I will pick the trainer just to train up. Gargoyles I like, they're very, very strong. Um, paladins can also get very strong, but they're incredibly expensive to train up. So the other ones I do like are the uh, Skeleton Magus. But I don't have a huge amount of cash, so I'll just leave. You can only select one of those three or one of these two. So week three, I'll go for an event. Well, a free level on my uh, goblin soldier there. So this is an interesting one. Again, I've not got a huge amount of cash, so the merchant probably not the best option. Instead, I will choose to plunder. So here, the game again randomly selects three monsters. And I've got randomly three places I can attempt to plunder can see what will happen, so I'll absolutely lose one of these volunteers for four weeks. Now I'll gain some gold and get an extra bonus. Or I could go here, 35% chance of losing one of these for 10 weeks. 50% chance of getting a free monster though. Or here, gonna get vulnerable for all monsters, not feeling that. I think I might just take... I mean, this is gonna take one of them out of commission for 10 weeks, but it's worth it. Ah, yep. Yeah. Didn't lose anyone, gathered some gold, and freed a flame eater. Not one of my preferred monsters, but never mind. And so the next set are also adventurers. Let's see what have we got. Yeah, so I can always heal 50% of life, heals 50% morale. Not the most dangerous or the least dangerous of teams. I think I'll go for a rallying horn. What does he do? Fire damage. Hmm. This is tricky. Um, none of these monsters are particularly good at taking out their morale, but I'll go for big icy boy for a little bit of damage. And none of these are particularly tanky. That is the uh, one major downside to this random G 
generation they can make it incredibly tricky but see the secondary effect of that rallying horn only does a bit of damage to morale but does give my fellas some enraged Oof. should they survive so yeah the paladin not the most dangerous not the least dangerous we'll just do the aoe here just to slow them a bit in the hopes that some of my monsters may get to go up in order and we'll go back to the main morale attack bit more stabbing um, yeah we'll hit them with a, another haste these effects do continue on through the stages they don't get immediately scrubbed now it would possibly have been better there to have actually just killed that one but Again, I'm thinking long term here. It's very rare you get to defeat the adventurers on the first phase, or even like the fourth phase, really. It's more of a case of just slowly whittling them down over time. There you have the health heal and the morale heal both processed. Now, the spells. I've got three. Uh, this is not random. This is always the same three spells for this particular character. Possibly later on there'll be other ones. So you've got direct damage, enrage the next group of monsters, or my preferred intimidation. It's only minus 5 morale, but as you can see, it will double their morale losses. Now, they've already got a stack of demoralized, and my monsters in the next room will hopefully manage to stack up a little bit more morale damage, especially since they are all still slowed. So that does physical damage and bleed, that does nature damage and poison. So as you can see, that first character there has minus 20 armor, which is listed at the bottom there. Yeah, but 20% nature, so on this occasion a blade thrust would be best. Um, it doesn't really fit in with my morale damaging strategy, but you can only play the monsters you have. Fear of the Dead, see, so that's now stacked up to a 6 morale, so that's minus 30 on the next turn, and because of the terrified it goes to minus 60. So you can really stack up the morale effects, which is why I tend to go for morale rather than outright damage. It's much more difficult to really stack up the damage, it's much easier to go for morale. So demons, creatures get armor, ring of wrath, Decent enough choices, I'll go for the uh, extra armor. So here, engineers can upgrade my traps. Trainers can train my monsters. Events can um, give you random stuff to do. What I do want to do is upgrade. Uh, see, I can only afford to upgrade a single trap. Hmm, lots of adventure. So I can kill him. I can scare him or I can capture him. So do I want blood tear? Well no, that would cost a thousand tears, so that's not an option. Could kill him, but I'd rather capture him because I want the money. So I can go to an engineer and upgrade the other bone catapult. So here's another option here, business trip. Again, you get three random monsters, three random periods. Uh, these will become unavailable for that number of weeks, but you do get the various rewards. Uh, skeleton arches I don't like at all, so I'll send them away for seven weeks, and that will immediately give me another 262 gold. So week 10 we now have our first choice, regular adventurers or veterans. Yeah, the level 2 difficulty, which I shall attempt. There's a third level of difficulty, the uh, champions. Go for a bone catapult, see what we got here. Immune to spells, repositions monsters, nothing overly concerning really. Uh, 
These guys not super terrifying. Slap them down. Now those monsters are all going to be repositioned, so it doesn't really matter which order I put them down. And you see where it says, randomly repositions all monsters at the start of one fight. They will always use it on the first fight. That's uh, That just pretty much goes without saying. I've never seen them not do it during the very first fight. So let's see what we've got. So yep, there's the uh, thing. He gets to do 50% damage before anyone even gets a turn. That's an unpleasant AoE there. Again, start stacking down the morale. Unpleasant, but it does add extra to the demoralized stacks. It's a pretty strong group, but I'm reasonably confident I can take them. Now we're going to see that one use their special ability to remove the demoralized and get enraged, which is slightly irritating, but even so, we will still intimidate them. And then add some more stacks of demoralized to them. Except that one's already run. She'll get some stacks of demoralized at least. Uh, could just go for damage. Could go for. I'll tell you what, we could do with some blood. So we'll go for a bit of damage. She'll probably run away anyway. Hmm, did survive. So yeah, we'll go for a little bit of physical damage. We do need to collect some blood for certain upgrades later on. Cash, um, Pigman. He's not bad, quite hitty, but doesn't really fit in with my morale again. The succubus also good damage when upgraded, but doesn't fit in with the heavy morale emphasis I prefer. Uh, see, I've got a choice of merchant or trainer. There is another trainer there, so I'll go for the merchant. See what it's got available. Nothing. I'll go for renew. Ah, there we go. Do you like the gargoyles? They are by far my favourite. Monster. Uh, I'm at 9 out of 12. I think I'll go for an event. Yeah. 300 bucks. And now another set of adventurers. Hmm, that's not an ideal start. I didn't really want to have both of my gargoyles in the very first room. Yeah, see, this has left me with a rather paltry setup for the final room. Back's got a lot of morale. But two gargoyles can uh, stack up quite a bit of unpleasantness. I just prefer to have them kicking it after the spell for double. For obvious reasons. We got a bit of use out of them. He's taking that one down nearly to the point where he's going to run. The others are down a little bit as well. Yep, yeah, Bone Catapult doing some good there. Intimidation once again. And fear of the dead for a lot of demoralized. This is going to really hurt them in their turn. Mm. 
Although, given how squishy these characters are, they might actually die to damage faster. Especially if I were to go for things like the fireball and such. But I'd rather scare them. As I say, sometimes you will just accidentally kill them before the demoralized even takes full effect. Yeah, that one's just inevitably going to die, so I might as well fireball. Just a poison cloud. Again, you can get, um, I think there are eight different traps in total. So the doctor can be used to heal you. If the uh, adventurers make it to you, they will attack you. And you have to finish them off yourself, they will hurt you, in which case the doctor comes in handy. Uh, merchant has nothing I particularly aspire to purchase. So workout can be used to increase your stats. I think I might just go for an event. Yeah, we'll take that for some extra cash. And we'll pay a visit to the trainer. What I would like is to uh, improve the gargoyles and the paladin until I have enough cash. Maybe get yeah, the orc as well. Other than so, the course is a special uh, training course, however. Although it's cheaper than actually manually training your monsters, it is completely randomly selected. Again, you don't get to pick which monster you send. He wants a new trap. Unfortunately, I don't have the cash for that. So week 19, I think I'll go for some veterans. As you can see, the game does play quite quickly. Ugh. This is a terrible lineup. Eesh. That's just abysmal. Oh, and it screwed me over with my traps as well. This is going to be tricky. Yeah, that one's immune to spells. This is going to be incredibly difficult. Unfortunately, the game has... Uh, decided it doesn't like me much at all. But I think I can do it. Hmm. One can but hope. My gargoyles just about survived to get their uh, AoEs off at least. You know, that'll be a good start. And you can bring it up to eight. That's that's not nothing, I mean they're half dead as it is. AoE attacks obviously very strong. And there goes the heal, not overly concerned. That one's gonna run away. That one's lost a lot of the demoralized effects, but between the spell and the next trap. I can't imagine them lasting too long. Yep, there we go. Not the best run I've had in this game thus far. Not the worst either. Well, I don't think I want anything from the merchant. I'll go for an event. And I'll let my fellas repair that slowly. <sighs> On that event you have to sanction them. If you ignore them, then one will kill the other. Which is... very bad. Uh, see, I, I don't really want any of these, but I am going to need another monster. Just to give me a little something. The trouble with these is they are quite squishy. Mm, it's only week 23. I'll risk a set of veterans even though I am missing my uh, preferred monsters. So 
So we'll send in the Harpy. The Harpy's not bad. Misty is quite good as well. But uh, we also definitely don't want to enrage monsters because they uh, double damage that one. So definitely avoid enrage effects this time around. None of these are awesome choices, unfortunately. I mean, as long as I can whittle them down, so I'm not having to fight all three of them myself. We should go all right. Uh, it's probably worth tasting. Just to see if that can bump my monsters up in the order. No, it doesn't. Well, fear of the dead. Again, sticking to the standard plan. So here we will actually roll and do a bit of damage just in case. Fear of the dead. See, so they only get to replace their debuff with a buff once. Yes, that's it. Run away. So, yes, in this case, you definitely wouldn't want to show no mercy because that one's still active. I mean, yes, she's going to run away, but in theory. If she was full health, full morale, you really wouldn't want to uh, enrage your minions. Oof, minus a hundred morale. That is good. And now we'll just blob some damage. I mean, it's not a, a major deal, really. Time for you to run away too. And I think this gives you pretty much an idea of how the game goes. So it is just going all the way through until week 52, ideally surviving and beating them up. But I think this is a long enough video to demonstrate the game. So thank you very much for watching.